If you want to get the top odds every time, bet with Top Sports Same Game Multi. Top Sport. Feel the excitement. Gamble responsibly. can almost smell it in the air. The footy's back on Saturday and we cannot wait. Uh, the All-Stars game's coming up on Saturday night. Thanks again for tuning in to the Same Game Multi podcast. Very, very, very big show this week. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at the All-Stars game and deep dive into a few of the teams and have a look at their season preview and uh, look at what their chances are for the Premiership this year. Uh, no time for introductions, so I'll do it real quick. Jared, J-Rod Burtman. Gotcha. And Mr. Cherry, the Chesmeister, how are you, boys? Fabulous. Afternoon. Big show today, boys. Big show where it's our first uh, of our NRL 2022 season preview. Four teams. We're going to look at four teams. We're going to deep dive into them, have a look at all the signings, uh, who's in, who's out, give our top 17 and also our ladder prediction. So make sure you stick around for that coming up later in the show. Top 17. Top 17. 17 players, isn't it? Oh, 17. I thought you meant teams. I was thinking, what the fuck are you on? <laughs> oh, it's going to be a long episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, how are we, boys? How's our week? Yeah, so far, so good. Yep. I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm off the drink during the week. Um, except for Friday Junior. Except for Friday Junior. So <laughs> I've got a plan. If I don't drink Sunday, then my Sunday is Thursday. So it's Friday Junior. So I uh, had, a, had a real big night. We got a real good win in cricket on, um, on Saturday. Um, and we have a little rule if we win, then we celebrate with pints. If we lose, we just drink schooners. So, nothing I'm, wrong with that. I was drinking pints of old from about, I don't know, six o'clock till about 2 a.m. And yeah, so you can imagine exactly what I was like on Sunday. Didn't have uh, Aaron Finch playing with you on the weekend, did you? Oh, I was Aaron Finch. Oh, <laughs> out for a day? <laughs> no, no, no. no he's, he scores runs and wins trophies, mate. How dare you? <laughs> how about yourself, mate? Mate, good. And how good is beer in this weather? Absolutely <laughs> loving it. Too good. I want it to change careers, become a politician, and make it mandatory. Beer should be drunk during the day while at work. <laughs> That's Imagine it. Vote one. one. Imagine <laughs> it. Yes. Uh, big show, boys. As I mentioned, uh, what we will do is just have a quick preview of the uh, All Stars game, which will be this Saturday night, uh, Saturday the twelfth of February, eight ten p.m. from Combank Stadium. Now that's the old Bank West. Uh, for those of you playing at home that might not know that, so out there, Parramatta Way. Which bank? Combank. Uh, sponsors of the show. <laughs> Get <Hi>. on board, <laughs> uh, boys. How do you see this? It's good to have the footy back. Um, these contests are always good. Obviously, the cultural, um, you know, significance to the to the players is is great. The start of the game is what I love the most. To be honest, the war cries and the war dances and all that kind of stuff. It for me, it probably more of a highlight than the game itself. But having a look through the teams, boys, how do you see this one playing out? Do you think it'll be a competitive match? Uh, and yeah, give me your thoughts on it. I'll just jump in quickly. These games every year, I always overrate them. In saying that, I always think there's going to be a big blowout score looking at the team lists, and I, I do get caught out occasionally. This year's not going to change. <laughs> uh, I reckon the Indigenous side are very, very strong this year, outrating the Maori side, and I predict a little uh, margin bet somewhere between uh, 16 to 20 points more than the, uh, the than the Maoris. I can just see that, see that happening this year, and we'll find out on Saturday night. Yeah, on paper, I suppose the Indigenous team probably does look a bit stronger. Uh, but, you know, going off previous year's games, you, you sort of can't put too much stock in that given the unlimited interchange. And I think you mentioned before there, Birdo, that last year you needed Mitchell to score and he only played half a game. So they, they do sub in and sub out a lot. So you can't really take for granted what's on the piece of paper uh, and how often, you know, people, the likes of, um, you know, Nico Hines and Addo Carr, how, how many minutes that they're going to play and, and put money on that. So it is a hard game to bet on too. Yeah, particularly when, um, this, like, for example, early in the week, if you're trying to get early early money on it, um, particularly when players tend to pull out, um, obviously club duties, they have the uh, biggest say whether they do or they don't play. Yep. Uh, last year, I actually enjoyed last year's game. Uh, I, however, I did, um, I had a little multi on it, and as you said, I needed Latrell Mitchell to score I don't, uh, any time. He didn't even play the last 25 minutes, so... It, you know that, that that's sort of hard to gauge that, but w within reason too. You don't want to, you don't want like for a Rabbitohs point of view, you don't want to um, to ruin him in the first game of the mm. season, sort of thing. Whilst they're still green because they got no match condition, just like the rest of doing with Joey Manu. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. So, but then having said that too, last year the odds were very similar. 
and I actually tipped the uh, Indigenous side to, to blow them out of the water, give them a good old romping, but... Uh, this year the market's similar, and uh, looking at the at the team list, there's still some quality players in that Maori side. Don't worry about that. Yeah, hundred percent. And you mentioned the market. We'll have a look at that now. It's up on your screen. Dollar uh, forty one for the Indigenous team and Maori. The two dollars ninety. That's head to head, and at the line. So Indigenous are minus six and a half, and Maori's a plus six and a half, and that's a dollar ninety there for those guys. So. Bit of early money on the um, on the Indigenous boys, I think, um, just looking at the team list. So if you do like the Maoris, they're $2.90 uh, in a two-horse race. It's pretty good. As you said, there are some good players for the Maori boys and also the Indigenous team. Um, on paper, boys, who, who do you think is the strongest team? Obviously, Ches, you reckon the, um, the Indigenous All-Stars. Where do you see the advantage for them over the Maoris? And I can see uh, with the halves there, they're running Albert Kelly uh, out, out, out off the bench uh, with, between Trindle and Tricky Trindle and Hines. If someone goes down there, Kelly will slot straight in. He'll be keen for this year too, playing next to Reynolds, so he's going to come out and put a bit of a show on there, I reckon, too. Match against the fullbacks is going to be interesting too. Rapana, Will Kennedy, both can put some tries in. That's going to be uh, maybe some uh, first try score. bets will unleash on those two boys throughout the state. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Brent Naden, I think uh, he's going to have a good year too this year. He'll get a, a lot more ball during the year, and this will be one of his games where he's going to come out and show what he's going to do, and if my predictions are right, he's going to have a really good game as well. Uh, Jesse Ramian's always solid. Uh, you look at other guys on the, the forwards as well. The forwards, they're going to be tough. Uh, Josh Curran, he's, one of, he's one, of, one of the better forwards there. Uh, not, not taking away from the Maoris from what I've said before, they do have a good side. I just think the Indigenous side is just a little bit stronger than them. This is the overall side. I think the the back five for the Indigenous boys are a lot stronger than the back five for the Maoris. You look at uh, Will Kennedy, Tabby Ifa Doe, Jesse Ramian, Brett Nade, and Josh Addo Carr. Uh, that's for the Indigenous boys. And then the Maoris, you've got Rapana, uh, Morgan Harper, Dylan Walker, who is a good utility player. Um, he's in the centres. Remus Smith and Patrick Herbert, who, who cannot throw a pass to, to get the Titans <laughs> in the top eight. But... Um, what about yourself, mate? Yeah, I like the Maoris. Do you? I do. I'll, I'll t- I'm, 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 I'm going to take them at uh, two dollars ninety. Nice. Um, I'll only have a couple of bob on it because I don't want to do me ass just in case. But I, I like it. And the, and the thing is too, when you talk about passion and pride, you'd be surprised how far this can actually push them and drive them to you know to what would you say to to be at that that top level you know and 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 in in a sense sort of match it. Um, particularly going off what you said earlier too. Dylan Walker, he's he's a little bit green last year because he can't, he played a lot of football off the bench. But one thing I do like is is Rapana at number one, mate. We we spoke about it two or three times last year as to how good he was against Para in that game, and and since then he just built himself up at that one. Um, and you know, as silly as this sounds, I think Chance might have a might have a bit of a struggle trying to make himself a back at fullback. He may play a bit of centres or something like that, but I tell you what, if it was me, I'd be near flipping a coin and leaving Rapana at one, um, and and maybe try and chance in the centres. But you know, and and when I look through the through the forwards, you know, James Fisher, Harris, uh, Bromwich, Brendan Nakora from uh, from Cronulla, handy himself, Jazz Tavenga, uh, and off, off the bench, you know, <laughs> Kevin Proctor, your boy KP. Hey, uh, <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give him a little stat, but like you know, it's these I sort of games. Left him out. It's these sort of games where people like Proctor can lift to that next Step level. They, they, they've got everything to prove. Can. Yeah. Mm. Can. Whether he will or not. But, yeah, I'll, I'll take that $2.90. You speak about uh, the boys wanting to play the game. Uh, you know, obviously the cultural significance. Let's have a look at the unavailable players. Uh, big, some big names. Caelan Ponga, Jerome Luai, Chance, Nickel Klockstad, uh, Corey Harry and Naira, Joey Manu, as it's come out, uh, the, the Roosters blocked that. Brendan Smith, Cody Walker, Jack White, and Latrell Mitchell, Alex Johnson. Some big names there, boys, that aren't available, whether it be, you know, themselves pull themselves out or the clubs. What what do you think of that? Uh, is, there's a few on there I can understand. The Joey Manu one, obviously, coming back from that fractured cheekbone, the Latrell hit last year. Um, what's your thoughts on clubs holding these players back if they're wanting to play? I think it's intelligent business. It is. Uh, business side of things, yes. If you want to go out and play one of these games and the coach doesn't feel you're ready, especially with the Joey Manu incident, stay at home, watch the game at home, get ready for, get ready for the big comp. Uh, imagine imagine if we lost him straight up before the comp even started. It's going to be the, the snowball effect from last year. Uh, big gun players like that, if they want to rest them, I don't see a problem at all. It's a, it's a very smart move. Can, think, 
can you sorry can you see a bit of um, hostility from the players if they are wanting to play in these kind of games because yeah, well, of the significance to them? You're always going to get that backlash, but that's something you've got to do. Mate. End of the day, it's like uh, for example, if if we would hurt ourselves, we don't get paid. You know what I mean? And don't get paid at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so what I'm trying to say is, effectively, it comes down to the goalie. <laughs> Here's hell. your jet just about to land out the back. Hell, no. <laughs> Uncle Nick's just going to land, drop, drop something off a bit <laughs> later. That's a fucking Boeing. It's a, the old Dash 8 must be low. Um, yeah, there's obviously, there's always going to be that backlash, but the way I see it, effectively, if you don't work, you don't get paid. In that sense, they do get paid, but at the same time, you're running a business. So are you going to pay Chance to miss, what he missed two-thirds of last year? Yeah, he missed a lot. Joey Manu, for example. Um, you know, like, for example, Wairia Hargraves. What happens if he, you know, that, that's one of your, your lead yeah. forwards. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I understand, and at the same time, end of the day, you just got to say to him, mate, you're under contract, and uh, we're trying to run a business and trying to win the comp. And I, I have mentioned this a few times last year. I still feel these games should be at the end of the year, not 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 directly at the start of the year. That's what I was just about off. to say that. At the end of the year, or do we have it as like a precursor to origin? Obviously, there'd be quite a... You know, a few, few players here that would, wouldn't be in there because they'd be in the origin side, but is, is that something, you know, have a little curtain raiser play during the season? That's a good idea too if you run it with, with the origin. It gives those other players that don't get a chance to do the rep footy, it, it, it'll, it'll give them a run. Mm, and, and have, have a best, best of three as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Get in touch for Landy's, we'll give you all the ideas. <laughs> um, all right, boys, uh, that just wraps about that. No, 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 wraps that one up. Uh, the women's game is also on Saturday night. It kicks off about 5.20 uh, as well. So get amongst that because the women, they go hard. Definitely do. They Love just, it. Just like watching the men's. Yeah. It's Anything great. else, boys, before we wrap her up on that? Should be about it. Should be about it. Yeah. Should, should, be, should be a good game. I, I'm Will looking be. forward to yeah, it. Yeah, I'm looking really forward to it. I uh, cannot wait. As I said, great to have the football back uh, in our life. It's been far too long since uh, October last year. And uh, even though, you know, it won't be too much of a contest as far as physicality and, you know, they'll still be warming up a bit of match fitness just to have it on the, the Saturday night. It gives you something yeah, to talk 100%. about. Now, I assume they'll play quarters? Uh, yeah, I don't know, to be honest. Pro possibly. Possibly. Still quite hot down there in old Sydney town, so... I think they might have played. It's unlimited in the change. They did, so they did, did they? I'm pretty sure yeah, they did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. You're right there, Bill Gates. Yes. <laughs> uh, we might take a quick break, but after the break, we'll come back and we're going to deep dive into a few of the NRL teams and have a look at their uh, season preview. So make sure you stick around for that. Another half win from punters jumping in early or waiting too late. You get a good price on one leg, but the others have. Shorten dramatically. You still win, but it feels like you half win. Introducing Top Sports Best of the Best Multi. Get top odds on every leg, every time. Don't be one of these. Just bet and forget Bob Multi. Top Sport. Feel the excitement. Don't let the game play. You stay in control. Gamble responsibly. All right, thanks for sticking around. Uh, I should have mentioned from the start, if you haven't already, make sure you do subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment as well. Uh, you can hit us up on our socials, Facebook, Instagram, and also head on over to our website, the same game, multipodcast.com. Check out all the content there. You can sign up to become an SGM club member, and also that way you can uh, get on board our footy tipping comp, which we launched last week. So over $1,000 worth of cash and prizes up for grabs, completely free for our SGM club members to join. And it's also free to become a member, so make sure you do head over there. It's on your screen as we speak. All right, boys, we're going in deep, eight inches deep into the Brisbane Broncos. Uh, we're going to preview four teams per week leading up to the season. Going to go alphabetically, so we're going to start off with the Brisbane Broncos. Uh, last year, boys, 14th. They had seven wins, 17 losses. Had a big off-season in recruitment, uh, namely Adam Reynolds, Kurt Catewell, a few others there as well. How do you see the Broncos' season playing out? And are they going to improve on their 14th finish from last year? I think they have to. 100% an improvement this year. I can't see them being 14th or any lower than that. Uh, with the squad they have, uh, Tessie Dewey's fullback again. Uh, always solid there. I think Reynolds might give him a bit of... Uh, bit more of a lift too. I think he might improve during the season playing with him. He'll be a lot better when it comes to direction. Exactly right, yeah. Controlling troops around the park. He too and um, old oh, KB, Kurt Kate. Well, he'll, he'll be he'll be massive for him. 
Yep. But I, st- I still think, regardless of what, what signings Broncos have, have made this year, player-wise, the best signing that they made was uh, Ben Eichen. Ben Eichen, you mentioned that last year. By a long way. You can see exactly, as soon as he was signed, bang, first thing, Kurt Cable came. Yep. So I, I think he's a fabulous signing. Uh, I'll pop up all the um, prices on the screen as we're speaking now, boys. But uh, for the Premiership, they're paying 26 bucks. Uh, minor Premiers, $34. Now, to make the top four, $8. If you like them for the top eight, they're paying $3. And also for the least amount of wins, I like this little one. So if you tip them to get the spoon, uh, 15 bucks. Uh, those odds are all thanks to Top Sport as always. So 26 bucks for the Premiership, obviously... Top Sport and, the, and Tristan, the boys there, you know, seem as a bit of an outsider. Uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll get to a lot shorter prices as we mm. review it, the rest of the teams. Uh, going through their gains for this year, we've got Adam Reynolds, as we mentioned, Kurt Capewell, Branko Lee comes from the Storm, uh, Corey Jensen, Jordan Pereira, Billy Walters joins his dad at the club, and also big Ryan James uh, come from Canberra. I don't mind the Ryan James uh, signing. I think it'll bring a bit of experience. I know he's on the bit of the you know, back end of his career. Uh, but he was good at Canberra last year, I thought. He brought a lot of maturity to that pack, and I think he'll do the same here as well. I was going to say, I, I still think that's a loss for Canberra. Yeah, because they've got a pretty young pack, the Broncos, uh, and I think he'll just add, you know, playing off the bench, he might only get 10, 15 minutes a game, but just being around the squad at training during the week after a loss, you know, picking them up, that kind of stuff. So I, I don't mind that. Thoughts? Yeah, I like it. I think he was a he was a lot better um, at Canberra than he was up in uh, at the Gold Coast. Uh, I thought he sort of struggled towards the back end up there, um, and, and I think it was. Do you think this is what I think anyway? Was it the fact that it was more of a lifeline? Do you think that was when he sort of it sort of kicked in? He's going well, you know, if I don't pull my finger out now, uh, this this last twelve months at the Raiders could be all I've got. Yeah, and, you know, it's sort of just whether it's uh, motivated him a little bit more. Yeah, I think he had a couple of serious knee injuries up to the Titans too as well. So I think he played a lot of his career up the Titans, probably injured, um, and you know, come down probably also that factor as well, bit of a lifeline. He, he'd be at ninety, he's probably only got this year, maybe maybe another year. I don't know, but I, I don't mind that signing. Uh, we're going to pop up our best seventeen. Each of us have put down a seventeen. Uh, who wants to go first for the Broncos? I'll hit it. Get you it. Looked at me first. Hit so. it. Just as you go to take a drink. Yeah, so just as I was about to uh, wet the whistle. But uh, now I'm not 100% sold on the fact that uh, I've got Jermaine Asako on the wing. But uh, Tessa Nui, I liked him at fullback. But Tessa Nui, I think, is just that little bit little bit better. Uh, also, too, Jermaine Asako is going to the Dolphins next year. So that, uh, you know, you want to get Tessa Nui to play as much one as you can. But So, mate, I've got Tessa Nui at one. I've got Oates which was a uh, – got Stag, Herbie Farnworth in the centres, Jermaine Asako at five, Kelly and Reynolds pick themselves in the halves. I've got Flegler. Now, I'm going to start Flegler almost all year if he if his condition can handle it. I like him. Uh, Jakey Turpin in there. Payne Huss picks himself. Kurt Capewell picks himself. Jordan Rickey in there as well. Patrick Carrigan will be the lock. Um, and I've got uh, Cobe Heverington. Ryan James, we just spoke about, uh, TC Rabati, and uh, Xavier Williams is a young fella coming through. I've uh, actually had a little little, little look into him um, before I picked my side, um, and he's he's not a bad player. And I think the the more game time he gets, um, he's a middle forward. Um, the the more time he gets, the better he'll be. Very good, pretty strong team. Uh, mine's a little bit different. Uh, do you want me to go, Ches, or are you happy to go? Or you go, mate. All right. So for me, uh, I'm the same as you at fullback. I've got Tessie New. I've got Herbie Farmworth in the in, on the wing, uh, and that's because I've got Branko Lee in the centres and Katoni Stag. So they pay big money for Branko, so they've got to play him, and he's a centre, so I can't see him playing anywhere else there. But I also needed Farmworth on the field. Uh, outside Stags, I've got Selwyn Cobbo. Now, I don't know if you boys have seen him. Uh, I watched him in the. I think he played in the, uh, uh, what's the second grade comp, the Queensland Cup yep, grand Cup. final. And he was amazing in that. Uh, so I've got him outside Stags. Tyson Gamble I've got at number six, a little bit different to you. Adam Reynolds, of course. Same as you, Flegler, Turpin, Payne Huss. Uh, back rows the same, Ricky and Capewell and Carrigan there at the lock. Billy Waters, uh, he'll be the number 14. TC Rabadi, Brendan Pecora and Ryan James. Now, boys, that I don't know if you're paying attention there, but that right side edge, Reynolds, Catewell, Stags, Cobbo, could be lethal. 
Toes will be getting licked and everything. Oh. <laughs> Make sure you wear some bed socks. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that combination on that right-hand side, if they can get it together, it, it could be a very lethal combination. You've got attacking outside of Cobbo, Stags, Catewell, and, and Reynolds feeding them the ball. Could, could be a very damaging right-side edge. One's very different in, in, a, in a few areas here. A lot of them are exactly the same. So Tessie Newey at fullback. Uh, Selwyn Cobo at two. Stags at three. Branko Lee at four. Oates at five. Albert Kelly running there at six next to Reynolds in seven. The big man Payne Huss uh, running there for the prop, Jakey Turpin. Ryan James, uh, we said number 10. I think he's, he's one of the better forwards in my eyes, uh, even though he's older. He's going to be good to watch. Different wearing a Broncos guernsey too. It's yeah. going to be different to... Same as Reynolds. It's, it's be, been a bit of a journey, man. Take a couple of weeks to get used to the used to the colours on him. Uh, Jordan Ricky, Kurt Capewell, Pat Carrigan. I think you boys had him as well. Yep. Now, my reserves are a bit different. Now, I did leave Tom Flegler out because he's uh, still on suspension. Um, he would have been in there floating somewhere, but this is my little reserve pack here. So we've got Kenan Palisai, Herbie Farnworth, Corey Jensen, and Jermaine Asako. So you got running with two outside backs? Yep. Okay. Something a little bit different. Yeah. I told you. A bit different. Did you have uh, Corey Oates in there? Yeah, mate, five. Yeah, well, yeah. there you go. So if worst case it's scenario, sub in, sub in. Oates can go into 12, 11 or 12. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that's not yep. bad. Corey Oates just missed out in my team. I would have had him nearly in the back row. Uh, and I know that he hasn't been training with the top squad. I, I read that the other day. So I don't think he'll be getting a start at the start of the season. Uh, I think he'll have to force his way into the side, whether by form or and or injury. So, um, boys, what's your prediction for these guys? Where do you think they're going to finish? They finished, as I mentioned, 14th last year. We all reckon they're going to do a little bit better, but how, how better? Well, I didn't give you uh, my... Uh my eight or my overall sixteen because I was I was absolutely stuck. I thought the the top six sides pick themselves and then from there down. I've slotted them in. Uh, I've slotted them in at ten. Um, I'd like to. Oh no, I haven't said that. My apprentice is a Broncos supporter and I love get seeing them getting belted, but I, I think they'll, <laughs> I think they'll be better than. I've got them tenth as well. I think they're going to. Here comes. Nick's coming in again. Um, I've got them at finishing 10th. I think they'll finish about four places better than last year. I can't see them making the top eight. Uh, three bucks if you do like them to make the top eight. But I just can't see them getting there yet. I think they're another off-season and recruitment away from making that top eight. I was going to say, I think they're... Well, they've got a good half. I think they're just that one X factor somewhere else. Yeah, short. and my worry is if that half goes down, obviously I've got Tyson Gamble in there, you boys got Kelly, so they can fill that in. But last year they had about 30 different half combinations and they couldn't get a win. So my fear is if Reynolds go down, if Haas goes down and oh. Catewell goes down, <laughs> and you've got to remember Haas and Catewell, they'll both be playing Origin. Reynolds might be if something happens to Cleary. Like, you mm. got this as well. So, taking all that in my factors as well. So, I'm going 10th. Mate, I'm going to. Is there a market for them, one of them to do an ACL? Because oh, after. Hey, the, the way you've been putting the mock on the people. I think if they picked up a really good number nine, they're definitely up there around like the sixth and fifth position. That'll almost tick the box of their spine. Now, just after running straight off what you said, I can vision headlines at the end of the year. I've picked them running ninth, just missing out on the top eight. There'll be a bit of a spiel about it. Next year, we are hunting for the eight. That'll be the end of the year headlines for the Broncos. And that's coming, you've heard of the first, ninth. Do you get the Brisbane newspaper down here, do you? <laughs> I, get it, I get it through email, mate. Uh, all right. The post so, is a bit slow at the moment. Yeah. So 10th, tenth, 10th tenth and ninth. Uh, very good. I, I, all in all, I think they will have a better year than last year. They they were pretty hopeless last year. Uh, Kevy's, you know, second year at the helm. But, you know, if you do like them, get on early. 26 bucks for the premiership. Uh, and if you don't like them, 15 bucks for the least amount of wins. So, a bit of a market there. All right, boys, let's uh, let's move into the next side that we're going to preview, and that's the Canberra Raiders. Uh, now, these guys were disappointing last year. Uh, we all remember I actually picked them to uh, win the comp and become minor premiers. And they were the one team that I missed out on uh, in, the, in my top eight. They really let me down last year. Really disappointing. Disruptive season. There was all, you know, rumours and, you know, player unrest and all this kind of stuff and people getting arrested, all this. Last year they finished 10th. They had 10 wins and 14 losses. Any improvement this year, boys? Are they going to, you know, advance, stay the same, or can you see them dropping down a little bit? Where did they finish last year again? 10th. Well, I've got them at 9th. Looking you, at got my, them, you got them yeah, one spot up. Looking at my card. I think 
I think they'll be better for last year. I haven't said that. Um, Bim's got COVID, so he can't punch me on Saturday. At the, <laughs> at the, at I was, the was just going to say, uh, the, the guru is actually out this week. He's uh, in isolation. Yeah. I'm going to call his bluff. I reckon he's at home with the Viking clap <laughs> Could be. after the weekend, hey, mate. He might have, might have jagged one down at the ball. <laughs> uh, I reckon they're going to go one better. I haven't said that. They're still in that that section where it's a juicy shit sandwich. Mm. Looking at the odds, uh, premiership paying 19 bucks, minor premiership 21, make the top four six bucks, top eight two dollars twenty, and lease wins seventeen bucks. So six dollars for top four. Six dollars for top four. So it's Broncos are back Broncos. in. Sorry, mate. Broncos are backed in starting with the bookies. I'll say they start with the bookies better than, than the than the Raiders. No, incorrect. To make the eight. To make the eight. Yeah. Make the eight, the Broncos were three dollars. The Raiders are two dollars twenty. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, that's okay. So I've actually that's your one and only said, for this. Your one and only for this episode. <laughs> I thought you said four bucks for some no, reason. No, no, they're not on the top four. Yeah, so obviously they lost It's on the screen if you want to have a uh, Ryan James, which we just mentioned, uh, Solly Ola's retired, and then the George Williams in- incident as well. Picked up Kotrick, Adam, Adam Elliott, and Jamal Fogarty. Mm. Uh, I've actually got him running a spot lower than last year. I've got him going to run in at the 11th. Okay. I like the Jamal Fogarty uh, Sorry, the, Sorry. Uh, okay. The main reason for that is just the teams above him. Uh, that's the only reason why. There's a, there's a few of these newer teams here, which we'll get through over the next few weeks, and you'll see why I've put, put them down to... Uh, down that one spot from okay. last year. I like the Fogarty signing. Um, obviously, they needed a halfback with the whole George Williams saga last year and him pissing off. Uh, I think he will complement Jack Whiten really well. He's a playmaking, um, controlling halfback, which is good. Let Jack Whiten just run and play his natural game. So I can really see that partnership taking off. Um, Nick Kotrick comes back, as you mentioned, chairs back from the Bulldogs, a little stint there. He'll be good on the wing. Adam yes. Elliott, be interesting to see how he goes. A bit of a lifeline for him. He's a bit like that Ryan James. You know, this is this is it for him. If he has a shit season or plays up again, he, he, you won't see him. He'll be off at Super League. Uh, you mentioned the losses. A few there. Uh, but the big loss that I've got highlighted here, boys, is Harley Smith-Shields. Now, he hasn't signed with anyone else. He's gone down with an ACL injury last week in training, mm. and he's going to be out for the whole season. He was dynamic last year, uh, a really solid young player coming up, and you could just see him sort of working his way into a full, full-time full spot in the side. But unfortunately for him, he's gone. Uh, and one other, boys, I've got highlighted now. Once I go through my 17, he's not in there, but I've got him highlighted, Xavier Savage. Have you seen this kid play? Yep. I think his dad's Randy, isn't it? <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he can play. He's got some... Yeah, yeah, he's, he's got... He's, definitely. Yeah, big prospects. So I think uh, look out for him to get a fair fair bit of uh, game time this year. I think they would probably stay him on the bench, maybe on the wing. There's an injury here or there. But I think by the end of the year, he'll be a starter. Slowly bleed him in. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your preview, mate? What's well, your prediction? What's speaking this? of it, I've actually got the Sav, Xavier Savage at one. Okay. I'm going to start Starting. him at one. Um, just to, you know, realistically, as I said, I'd rather see Rapana there, but, you know, I'd, I'd start him just to see how we go. So I've got, this is this is what I'll start with, not necessarily what I'll go all year, but I'm going to have uh, Xavier Savage at one. My two wingers will be Rapana, and I've got Sebastian Chris in there. Uh, Nick Cottrick, he doesn't get a show in Shitville. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no, not he, in. he can fuck off. Uh, I've got Chans at four, yep. Crocker, Croker at, uh, at three. Yep. Um, he's almost at the end of his tether too, the big fella, unfortunately. He's been yep. good. I've got Jack White and Jamal Fogarty. They pick themselves. I don't think they're really too much else. I've got Josh Papali or Papali'i. Papali'i, we'll yeah. Take it as, yeah. <laughs> um, at, I've got Josh Hodgson at, at nine. I've got yep. Ryan Sutton at 10. Corey Harawiranara at 11. Adam Elliott, 12. Elliott Whitehead at 13. Tommy Starling, Joseph Tarpane, Corey Horsborough. And I've got Hudson Young are my uh, four my four um, benched players. So um, hopefully Corey Horsborough can come back this year with that fire that he had uh, two seasons ago before he'd done his... Um, oh, big red. Yeah, uh, big red. <laughs> I got like sma- it. Got smashed at Parramatta and cried. Yeah. <laughs> um, my team's very, very similar, just a little bit different shape and uh, how they're going to line up, except for i got Charns at number one. Uh, you, had, you had Savage. Rapana two, Croker three. Sebastian Chris at four and Nick Kotrick on the wing there at number five. They've got to play him. I think they just re sign him. White and Fogarty at the halves. Papa Leahy. Josh Hodgson just. 
I was nearly going to put Tom Starling in there, but I'm going to play Starling off the bench for his impact. Uh, but I, I, I like how Ricky used them at the back end of last year, brought Starling on early, put uh, Hodgson into like the back row and gave Starling about 60 minutes of game time instead of just paying 30. So hopefully he'll do that again. Number 10, Ryan Sutton. Uh, 11, Elliot Whitehead. Number 12, Hudson Young. Number 13, uh, Joseph Tarpany. On the bench, I've got Tommy Starling, Corey Harrier Naira, Corey Horsburgh, and Adam Elliott. And the coach is your boy. Ricky oh, boy. Oh, Ricky Stewart. Oh, sticky. Sicky Ricky. Uh, what about yourself, Chez? How's, what's your top 17 for the Raiders look like? Mate, very similar to yours. A uh, few different there on the bench. Uh, clock started at fullback. Rapana and Birdo's favourite Nick Kotrick there on the wings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Croker and Seb Chris there in the centres. Half speak for themselves, Whiten and Fogarty. Papa Lee e, 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 playing number <laughs> number eight. Uh, yeah, Hodge. That was the same with you with Starling. I I, I got Hodge and Starling yeah. at nine. Uh, uh, Joey Tupney ten. Elliot Whitehead. This was a bit different to yours, but uh, Elliot Whitehead eleven. Corey Harawira at Narera at twelve. Sutton at thirteen. Starling on at fourteen. I've done a little bit of moving around here with these last couple: Hudson Young, and Xavier Savage, and Adam Elliott at seventeen. All pretty much the same players there amongst us, just a little bit different in how we're going to play them. So a few tweaks here yeah. and that sort of thing. I do like Xavier Savage. Like I said, at the end of the year, I think he'll be starting the side. I don't know where, but I think you know, there's always injury. Someone's going to get injured or whatnot, and I can see him sort of work his way into a starting spot there towards the back end of the season. I just like his dad too. He's really good. <laughs> <laughs> so where did uh, Savage come from? As in from Xavier Savage. Yeah. They, he blood him. They played him a few games last year. They did? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't come from anywhere. He's with the Raiders last yeah, okay. year. The word Savage might be, I don't know, maybe Greek or something like that. <laughs> from What's your prediction, mate? Where you got him finishing? Tenth last year, 10 wins, 14 losses. I've got Raiders at ninth. Ninth, just missing yeah, out. Just missing out. I got him scraping in. They're eighth on my books. Yeah, I got him at 11. Oh. Dropped there from the. Eight, nine, 11. So they're Oops. dropping down a bit. They've got a bit of depth, which I do like about them. Um, with Savage now and Clockstad moving around, all that kind of stuff. Adam Elliott, you know, at a pinch, he can play 5 8. So I, I don't mind. There's a few good players there that missed out. Emre Gula. Um, like a bit of flexibility. Tomoko, too. Matt Tomoko. He was mm. dynamic last year. The head year, you know, couldn't stop him. So, he, you know, centre back row there as well. Um, yeah, they've got a bit of bit of depth at least if they do come across a few injuries. So, uh, All right, that's the Broncos and the Raiders wrapped up. Uh, stick around. After the break, we're going to deep dive into the Canterbury Bulldogs and also the Cronulla Sharks. You can't beat Top Sport's best of the best moldings. Top odds are guaranteed during any Saturday Metro meeting. Plus, there's best of the best to win up to five grand on Saturday Metro 2. Top Sport. Feel the excitement. Gamble responsibly. All right, we're back. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, let's get, jump right in, boys, to the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. Uh, very disappointing season last year. They end up 16th, dead last, wooden spooners. Three wins. Three wins. 21 losses. Some good signings in the off-season and, and during last year. Obviously, there's a the whole Matt Burton thing wanting to release him. I bet you he's glad he didn't go because he ended up winning a premiership. Um Prices are on the screen as we speak. Twenty-one bucks for the premiership, twenty-six for minor premiership. Make the top four; they're paying seven dollars fifty. If you like them for the top eight, two dollars sixty. And least amount of wins are on par. I think with the Broncos there for fifteen bucks. I think the only money you'll get out of any of those odds would be a top eight bet. I yeah, think. top eight for two dollars sixty, not bad. Um, but for me, I can't see him getting in there. But boys, Josh Addo Carr, Matt Burton, Matt Dufty, Tavita Pengai Jr. Uh, we've got Reese Hoffman as well, Paul Vaughan, Brett Naden. They've they've signed a few blokes. I still think they're twelve months off. I think I think they need. I a little still think they're twelve months off. They need a nine. They desperately need a nine. Um, Jeremy Marshall King. Yeah. Anything, boys? What What's your thoughts on them? Can you see them improving on sixteenth from last year? Uh, How do you see the season playing out? For like the a, like I said about the Broncos, they can't not. They can't not improve. They have to improve, um, particularly some signings. I'll give it to them. They, they did, did do some recruiting in the right areas, that's for sure. But I tell you what, they're probably a 13 away from being competitive. Like, you know, I'm talking top four. Unfortunately, that for them, financially f feasible, that's not going to happen. No. What I would have liked to see, I would have liked to see a, a controlling player. Um, 
a nine or a seven or a thirteen. Um, you know, Joshy Jackson. At the same time, he's just the old grunt man. He just he just does all the hard yards and shakes hands at the end of the day. Whereas you look at the big sides, um, like for example from Para. Nathan Brown, the all the ball running he does, Victor Radley, etc. I think I Isaiah think, Yo, Isaiah Yo, um, how, how Trebojevic. Trebojevic, yeah. how important a thirteen is. I cannot express. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I don't. I, I'll give him credit, mate. He punches it up the guts. Um, Hardest worker playing in the comp. Absolutely, hands Hardest down. Worker. But I think they, I think they're just either a nine or a seven away from being shit hot. Yeah, and you look at that nine. They got that coming next year in Reed Marnie. They've also got um, Skunkhead. Billy <laughs> <laughs> Army, uh, Army coming as well. R- remind your son of one of those 90s punk videos, <laughs> isn't oh, it? Terrible. I need a spat then. <laughs> <laughs> so they are building, and as I said, I think they're 12 months away. This time next year, when we're doing our season preview for next year, they'll be they'll be a lot higher up my list, let me tell you, because they will have that nine. That, that's what they're missing this year. Sorry, I was just thinking if the carpet matches the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you've got a manscaped uh, in our D, you wouldn't have absolutely. to worry about that. <laughs> and. and you, like, uh, this is a massive loss for Para in my eyes, but at the same time, I, I take hat off to him f- for not chasing and falling into the big money of Reed Marnie, but he's going to be absolutely excellent there next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, you look at the... Sorry, Chess. I'll just quickly jump in there. With like, with, the, with the buys they have, um, Addo Carr, obviously a sensational player, as we know. Will he get the quality ball that he got no. last year? That's the thing. Will he get those yeah. nice niche passes straight in the chest just before the line to get him over? I was going to say, particularly when, when someone, Justice Olam, does so much work. That's exactly right. I've got um, him playing like outside he, Aaron Shoot. He and, need to take three three players to tackle. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He draws in so much. I've got him playing outside Aaron Shoot, and Aaron Shoot ain't no Justice Olam. No. And with Burton, I'd, I'd run him in the centres. That's, that's just me personally. Mm. I'd have him in there if... If, if they had someone else yeah. to replace there him was, there. There that's was talk of him playing one. Burton. Yeah. He'll have to um, pay six. He, he's, yeah, okay. he's signed on 500000 a year. And, and as, I, as I touched on before with Brett Naden, with his experience from Panthers, moving clubs, trying to have a real good go, will that experience work with the Dogs' gameplay as well? So we'll see what happens there. Yeah. There might it's be a bit, bit of it. Like, like what you said, it's going to take a while for him to gel. This isn't their year. Next year is going to be very interesting. Mm. Yeah. I know Naden usually played on the right side in the centres of the wings at, at Penrith, but they might be tempted uh, for Barrett to put him outside Burton. So go Burton, Naden, Fox on the left-hand side, because I think Burton will play down the left. Um, that might be an opportunity there or an option there as well, which which could be, you know, could work into a pretty good partnership. Yeah, yeah. Um, boys, give me a top uh, top 17. Chez, we'll start with you this time, mate. All right. The Doggy Dogs. Kicking off, number one, fullback Matt Dufty. Number two, Jaden Ockenball. Number three, Matty Burton. Number four, Brent Naden. I'll put him in the centres here for, instead of off the wing. Number five, the Fox. Uh, now, number six, this is a <laughs> very biased decision here. Kyle Flanagan, number seven, <laughs> Jake Avarillo's. Uh, there's no one else that can play there apart from him at this stage. Lukey Thompson at prop. Jez Marshall King, obviously at nine. Uh, and then we've got Paul Vaughan, Tav Peng Jr. Ava, oh, here we go. Lucky like I've got the glasses on today, boys. Ava, Suamana Fagai, Josh Jackson at 13. Done well there, too. I did. I did. <laughs> Not, a bad, I got, Not a bad effort. I got the specs on today. For the first, first, uh, first one of the season. Now I've got uh, Aaron Shoup there starting off the bench. Ray Fisher Mariner, Corey Waddell, and Max King at number 17. I like that name, Max King. Max yeah. King. It's got a ring to it, doesn't it? Like Max Power of the Simpsons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Berto, yourself, mate? Mate, uh, I've gone the Duff Man. Oh, yeah. At one, Addo Carr at two, Matty Burton at three. Now, I've left Brent Naden out. I do not rate him at all. So I'm going to go Braden Burns in there at four, Corey Allen at five. I've gone Brendan Wakem. In, uh, and in at six, I've got Jack Avarillo, Jake Avarillo in there. Lukey Thompson, I've got the Jazz Marshall King in there. Vaughny at 10 as well. I really like Vaughn. I thought he was, I, I think he's a massive loss for St. George. So I think the cake will be on their face. Now I've got. Uh, and, and barbecues at his house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the good. first victory, I heard. <laughs> now I've got Fatala Mariner in there as well. Tavita Pangai, he picks himself. There's no way on God's green earth is he not going to start. Um, he's in at 12. Joshy Jackson, uh, same to himself in at 13. I've got Jade Nockerbore at 14. I'm going to play. Him, not so much as a utility, but if something goes wrong in the back row, he's big enough to step in. 
whether he'll handle the yards, um, definitely don't defend him in the middle. But And then again, if something happens in the back line, I can slot him in there. I've got Jack Hetherington in there as well. Jackson Tarpany in there. And I've got Corey Waddell finishes me off there at um, 17. Interesting. So both you boys have uh, Burton playing in the centres. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for me, I've got Matt Dufty, fullback, Josh Adokar, Brett Naden, Aaron Shoup, and Corey Allen on the other wing. Uh, Matt Burton, I've got him at six. I, I, I think you've got to play him at six. And I've got him partnered with Kyle Flanagan. I think it, with Burton there and Flanagan, yes, they're young halves, but I think you've got to give that pairing a, a chance at least for four or five games this the start of the season. Uh, Paul Vaughan, number eight. Jeremy Marshall King, number nine. Luke Thompson uh, ran out the front row. Corey Waddell, uh, number 11. Pengai Jr., number 12. Josh Jackson, 13. I've got Jake Avarillo on the bench as my utility, number 14. He can come on as dummy half. If something does happen to the halves, he can come on there as well. Max King, um, Fatala Mariner, and Jack Hetherington, the penalty giver away a machine. Mm. Don't say I left him right out. Did See, you? Oh yeah, that's one of those things too. I, I I know what you're saying here. The amount of money you're playing for Matt Burton, realistically, now that I sort of look at it, you're mad not to play him in in the halves. But then again, you can. He, he's a. This is my argument with Nico Hines as well. Like, where do you play him? I feel he's played his best football at, in the centres, but yeah. like you said, you're mad not to start him because of the price tag you're paying for him. If you have a def- decent halves player, he is that he's worth that money. You, just just have a look at Manly. Cherry Evans and Absolutely. Turbo, that sort of a combination. If, if he had someone there to back him up, yeah. given, given the, the balls like DCE does, then he is worth that money playing centres. Yeah, fi- and fingers crossed, um, the Duff man goes well. Um, I think he's he's been given the cold spoon by, by St George, oh, and I, I, I like him. Apart from size, that's the only thing that let him down, but I think those days are gone, aren't they? Well, you look at Dufty, Paul Vaughan, Brent Naden, they're all last chances, uh, you know, They've been chipped out by their clubs. Uh, you know, Naden's had sniffing issues there over at the Penrith Panthers. <laughs> allergies. Uh, yeah, terrible allergies Allergies out there, Wes. Uh, Pawnee, Paul Vaughan. <laughs> Pawnee, Pawnee, Pawnee Vaughan. Um, Pawnee had a spit then. <laughs> loves the barbecue. Uh, and, and, you know, Matt Dufty didn't get on with the coach and, and is... Griffo. Yeah, and is, um, you know, questionable in defence. But he does kind of make up for it in his attack. So yeah, but it's he's one, one of those players, you know, it you, you kind of levels each other out. Mm. But if if he's letting in 12 to 14 points a game, but only scoring you six. Yeah, I was just about to yeah, say. Is he worth it? If he's scoring two, but letting in four. Yeah. Um, how have you gone and finished, Chess? Oh, where's my sheet here? They finished now, 16th last year, dead last. Three they, wins. They certainly did. Uh, they'll be a lot better than that this year. Now, this one plus the Broncos is the reason why the Raiders were so low on my list. I've got the Dogs running in at 7th this year. 7th? Seven. Seven. Top 8. $2.60, get on. So I certainly do. Uh, and you know who you are listening at home with that bet for the end of the year. They will not make the top four, and I'll enjoy my carton at Christmas. Well, that person, if you do like them for the top four, $7.50 with tops, will get on over, use our code SGM. Uh, what about yourself? Oh, I'll go. I've got them finishing 12th, so I've got them... Creeping up the ladder a little bit, I just can't see them pushing for that top eight or even that you know the bottom nine ten position. Twelfth, I think, is reasonable finish for them this year. As I said, next year you've got a few other players coming, and then I I feel they might be pushing for the eight. Have you been reading my notes? <laughs> no, I've got the dogs at twelfth as well. Um, as you said, give or take. Um, I remember at TAFE, if we made a mistake, it was give or take two mils. So I'm going to give or take them two places. <laughs> but um, I'm going to say dogs at 12th, um, they could surprise me. And end of the day, speaking of cake on face, the cake could be on my face and I'm happy to wear it. But I'll, I'll, I'll see him at 12. One of us will be right, at least. Hey, it's either they're, they're, they're a hit. someone's going to be in the eight or <laughs> someone's... <laughs> yeah. uh, very good. Well, yeah, I think we're all, all expecting to do a little bit better than last year, at least we can say that. Uh, moving on to the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks, boys. Uh, now, these guys last year finished ninth just outside the top eight, and that was on a, on a bit of a countback. I think the Titans just snuck in there at the, the last uh, round. Premiership paying $17. If you like them for the minor premiership, $19. Make the top four, five bucks. Top eight, $1.90. I think they're going to make that. And least amount of wins, $34. So they're not expected to take out the wooden spoon this it's year. And a fair shout. Recruited well. Uh, got a new coach and some three big signings, which we'll go through in a minute. Can I say the, oh, the first one when it comes to that, please? Uh, you certainly can. Uh, and you can say it right now. Dale Finucane. Hey! <laughs> Your boy, Dale Finucane. Uh, Nico Hines. 
Uh, Cameron McInnes. Also, Matt Ikevalu, they got late last year mm. as well. I think that's a pretty good signing there. Uh, they didn't lose too many. Well, they lost a few, but for me, you know, Aaron Woods, Sean Johnson, your boy, uh, Berto Chad Townsend, Chatty. Will Chambers, Josh, Josh Dugan, uh, a few of these players at the back end of their career. So I don't think they're huge losses. The Sean Johnson, out of all of them, I'd say Sean Johnson is probably the biggest loss, but he was obviously injured his Achilles and, and definitely at the back end of his career. So didn't lose too much and, and recruited fairly well. Similar to the Dogs for me, boys, I think they're 12 months away from pushing for that top four slash premiership. Yeah, I think um, they've done... As you said, I think they just need that little bit, little bit of chemistry as well. Um, but I think they've they've recruited really well. I'm um, starting with Craig Fitzgibbon. Um, he's a mastermind of football and has been for a long time. Chaz, you're a big rooster. Mate, the old uh, old school workhorse he was playing um, back with the Chooks in the in the nineties and early two thousands. Absolutely Absolute machine. And one thing about him too, I, th- I think he'll he'll simplify football there, which is uh, a big key. But also on top of that, so he's got Steve Price in there as well oh, as an assistant coach. So he's just won. Has he just won a comp? With which Steve Price, the ex footy player, or the Steve Price, ex coach, ex coach. Okay, yeah. So he's there as as his uh, what would you call him, the senior assistant. And underneath yep. there, he's uh, two other <laughs> Josh Hannay and uh, Daniel Holsworth is in there as their assistants. So yeah, it's not a bad coaching staff, really. Fucking magpie again. Josh Hannay, uh, you know, interim coach there at the Cowboys. He, he, he's pretty good. He's highly rated. Yeah. Um, and, and back on Fitzgibbon, he he picked and chose this. He kind of sat back. He was offered plenty of other coaching gigs. Didn't want to take it. Did his apprenticeship under Robbo, and um, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and picked this as a time to, to make the move to the first grade coach, and and he's done some good recruiting there as well. I and think Finu Carne, mm. your boy, um, to have him there is just going to be a wealth of experience for these younger lads. Speaking of masterminds too, Fitzgibbon's done his apprenticeship under one of the best coaches we've seen in arguably in the last ten years. Yep, I'd agree to that. Wonder uh, who's the dogs? Uh, uh, sorry, who's the Sharks' kicking coach this year? No idea. You, know? you should have done the research on that. I should have. I was, I, was, I was just thinking about it then. If they don't have one, it'll be Fitzy. Diego that Maradona. Man, that man could slot a ball over the sticks. Yeah. Head coach slash kicking coach. You should mm. get paid twice. <laughs> 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 double the salary, <laughs> double, the salary <laughs> double the tax. He's playing for the Sharks now. He can't. <laughs> uh, top 17. Uh, Chez, what do you got? Mate, i got the Sharkies running in at eighth. No, top 17, sorry. Oh, it's 17. <laughs> top 17. <laughs> you boys go. I'm just having a little... Uh, All right, I'll, I'll kick us off. Here. Number one, i got Will Kennedy. Outstanding season Absolutely. last year. I can only see him getting better this year. Uh, Matt Ikevalu, I've got him straight in there in the wing. Jesse Ramey and Connor Tracy at centre. Got to play him. He's a fantastic player. Uh, the suit man, Mulatalo, number five. Nico Hines, number six. Braden Trindle there at halfback. Now, this is where it got a little bit tricky with me. It was Toby Rudolph. I've got him starting. I've got Blake Braley as the number nine. Uh, Braden Hemulin Ueli as uh, ran out the prop there. Finu Kane as 11. I don't like Finucane playing in the in the um, front row. I like to have him on my team the whole game. Yeah. And I couldn't put him at lock because I got uh, McInnes there. Wade Graham is the second other uh, second rower. Cameron McInnes is lock. Matt Moylan at 14, um, he needs to prove his fitness. I think his body's breaking down on him. So if he can get string you know, half a dozen games together, I can see him coming off the bench being that impact player. Uh, Britton Nakora, uh, Talakai, and also uh, this one I really struggle with, but I put in Aiden Tolman just for his size, just for his size. They need another big man on the bench and a bit of experience there as well. But... It wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't stay there the whole year. But, boys, I've got Finucane at 11, not not in the front row. That's a fair That's shout. That's a yeah. fair shout. I'm bloody just readjusting things here. I just keep changing my mind, especially with that dog side. I've bloody gone through more ink than the Sunday morning Herald. Bloody. <laughs> I'll kick it off here. Uh, yeah, I've got Kennedy at the fullback, Sione Katoa, Jesse Ramian. Ikevalu, I'd throw him in the centres. Just for a little mm. bit of spice there. Ronaldo Molitalo playing at five. I want with the Hines and Moylan centre combination. Um, halves, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry, halves combination. Thank you. Are you running four centres? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good squad. Uh, I've got the boy Fanukin there playing eight. Uh, Blake Braley there, dummy half. C.O.C. for Talakai at 10. Wade Graham, Brighton Nakora, Cam McGuinness at lock there. You can't not play him anywhere else. To big, big Cam. Braden Hemlin, Uale, Jack Williams, Braden. Just, sorry, Jaden Beryl and Big Toby Rudolph. Now, I did have uh, Talakai and Rudolph 
in those positions and I'd just swapped them. As I showed you before, mm -hmm. I'd put Rudolph back into the 10 and start him and run Talakai off the bench there. They got a pretty good side. I remember last year they had uh, we brought up the fact that they struggle against these like the big sides, top eight, the yep. big top eight sides. I think they're in there this year as the lower ranked of the top eight sides. I think people got to start beating them now to get into the eight. Yep, bit of a gatekeeper team, aren't they? Yeah, I think I like um, that gatekeeper. Oh mate, I've oh. got them all. A uh, bit of depth there too. If something does happen to Brayley, obviously McInnes can play at the nine. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I can see he's a great number nine, but. Blake Braley was just as good last year. And McInnes coming off that ACL injury, how he's going to come back from that as well. Um, they've got some skill there. Wade Graham, uh, Matt Moylan, if he does play, a very skillful player. I just feel his body's breaking down a little bit on him, boys. It is. He's just a, a personal choice for me more than a... Yeah, you know. I don't mind him, but I just... Yeah. I've got him finish, uh, finishing seventh. They finished ninth last year. I don't know if I mentioned this at the start. Ninth last year, 10 wins, 14 losses. I've got him moving up a few spots to seventh. Yep. I like that. They will. Self, what do you got him, mate? I had him running at uh, eighth. Just in the yeah. top eight, just sneaking yeah. in. You've been reading my notes again. I've got him, <laughs> I've got him at seven. but Seven as well. Look at, look at my list. I, I was almost so, so tempted to put Nico Hines at one, but at the same time, then where do you play Will Kennedy, and then he's a waste every, everywhere else. So yeah. Kennedy, I've got Sione Katoa, Jesse Raymond, Matty Cavallo in the centres as well. Chez for a bit of a hot yeah. sauce on there, a bit of... Ronaldo Mulatalo, the Parmesan and cheese in there at wing. <laughs> Nico Hines, Trindle. I've got Dale Finucane at eight. I like, I, I, I like what you said, actually. But I'm going to leave him at eight. Blake, Blake Braley in there. That's hard to say, that name. Yeah, it's, it it's, is. A, it's a it's a, it's a old tongue. It's a bit of a tongue, Krista. Um, Hamu and Ueli, Brendan Nakora, Wade Graham is on his absolute Mickey hair last chance. If he gets one knock to the head, he's gone. Absolutely. Cameron McKenna, so I'm going to pick him. With his tooth in. <laughs> <laughs> How good is it? Yeah. Um, it Connor Tracy, Matty Moylan in there on the bench is a bit of a utility. Um, as I, he too is a Mickey hair away from it. I've got Toby Rudolph. The uh, He's the big Thor lookalike. He's actually a stand-in for the next Once a Warriors movie too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, I've got to, um, Talakai, Talakai. At, at 17. So And that Dale Finucan. Um, I'm going to have him not as Dale Finucane, but I'm going to have him as Shrek when he turns into a human. <laughs> <laughs> See that photo where he's got the tape wrapped and it's all blood. I love it. Um, very good, boys. Some good uh, good discussion there about those four teams. As I mentioned, we're going to do four teams each and every week. That's the four for this week. Uh, but stick around because after the break, we've got a special edition of Twenty One and Whoa. Done. Another half win. From punters jumping in early or waiting too late. You get a good price on one leg, but the others have shortened dramatically. You still win, but it feels like you half win. Introducing Top Sports Best of the Best Multi. Get top odds on every leg, every time. Don't be one of these. Just bet and forget Bob Multi. Top Sport. Feel the excitement. Don't let the game play. You stay in control. Gamble responsibly. All right, thanks for sticking around. We're back for the last segment of the show. Uh, we'll just quickly jump into our charity bets um, for this week. Thanks to Top Sport. Uh, head on over to uh, topsport.com.au or download the app. Make sure you sign up using our code SGM, and uh, that way they'll know that you listen to the show and come over to them. Boys, I'll kick us off. I'm having my full whack. We've got a big UFC on this week. Uh, Robert Whitaker versus Israel Adesanya uh, for the mi middleweight title. I'm going Robert Whitaker for the upset, boys. He's mm. paying $3 with Top Sport. Great price. I'm going to have the full whack 50 on him. Big fan. Uh, Adesanya is a great fighter and, you know, and demolished him last time they fought, but I can just see Whitaker uh, coming back, correcting his, where he went wrong in the last fight and uh, getting, the, getting the knockout victory here. Dana White actually made a comment on Rob Whitaker. He said he is by far probably one of the hardest workers he has ever seen in the UFC history. Yeah, when, when it comes to you know mental, you know physical work, his mental work and stuff like that, it was when he he was in the Ultimate Fighter series, uh, and he was one of the coaches, and they had a, I think it was an eight k run, and he blew. I can't remember who he was, the other team. Anyway, blew him out of the water, cut to Dana White, and he said, "He goes, I knew he was going to win before they even started." He said, "He is the hardest worker. He's conditioned in every." So he generally, when when Europe's open, he'll go train in the snow, so he's conditioned to all different environments, so his cardio is as best it can be. Like on Rocky Four, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chasing chickens. That sort of stuff with the... Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who you got? <laughs> Mate, um, I, I think the same as you, 
but I've gone with the favourites here for my charity bet. Okay. So I've included the uh, UFC in. So I've gone Adesanya only because of the bookies, the, the the bookies price. I'd love to see Whitaker win, but I've had to follow the bookies on that one. The other fight is the Derek Lewis and Tuivasa. That's going to be. An yeah. absolute big, weapon of a fight. Right. Bam, yeah. bam. It'll, be, it'll either go the distance and they'll both be knackered or someone's getting knocked the fuck out. There'll be someone with either it's hot balls or drinking a shield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly right. So I'm Joe Rogan around for some marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> so I've gone the beast, Derek Lewis, just to win that one. And then the Indigenous side to win on Saturday night with that minus six and a half. Taking Going out the, the line. line. Yeah, so I've, I've gone the line bet, and that's paying $4.12. Whack her all on. Bit of a three-legger. Yep. A uh, bit like a fellow I knew back in high school. <laughs> uh, what, what about yourself, mate? Mate, I've got a little bit of uh, licorice all sorts here. I've got a uh, bit of English football. So I'm going uh, Manchester City to win head-to-head, Tottenham Hotspur to win head-to-head. Then I'm going to the Australian football, soccer, which is Melbourne victory to win. They're at about $2.40, so there's a little sauce. Uh, and I'm going to sneak that in on Monday, Super Bowl. I'm going to get the LA Rams to win oh, head-to-head Super as well. Bowl, right. That'll be $6.44, and I'm going to put the big 5-0 straight on. Nice, love it. Um, we'll definitely be having some uh, multis coming up in the footy season, so mm. cannot wait for that as well. Uh, all right, boys, fantastic. That's Charity Bets. Thanks to Top Sport. Let's head into 21 and done now. I mentioned special uh, edition. All the questions are around the four teams that we've previewed today. Ooh. So very isolated. Jeez. Oh, Test tell buzzers. Him to, tell him to put his fucking notes away. Test your buzzers. Birdman. Cheers. I'm just going to turn my right. book over. I've got more, <laughs> n- <laughs> Cheat more notes here than the. All right. Let me know when you're ready. Let right. Me know okay. Let's go. Right. All right. Here. Out of the four teams we previewed today, which team would be third on an alphabetical list? Chez. Fuck. Dogs. <laughs> Canterbury, uh, Canterbury Bulldogs. Canterbury Bulldogs. I did, I did think that was. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. Former Parramatta Raider and Queensland representative is Clinton Shifkowski. How do you spell Shifkowski? Not even going to I'll, I'll have you going to say Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Good name. Good first Chez. Name. I'm going to yep. guess. I'm going to write them as I go. S C H I double F. Only one F, so you can pick up from there, Birdo. S C H I F O. S K I. No. It's a S C H I F C O F S K E. Nice yeah. and easy. Get a good name like Smith. Nice <laughs> and easy. No points Love for that shame. one. All right. Uh, what are the first names of Shark's father son duo, the Rogers? Chez, Steve, and Matt. Oh. Yes. Nice. Good one. Uh, which Broncos halfback is taller, Ben Hunt or Adam Reynolds? Chez, Ben Hunt. Ben Hunt is correct. He is 1.78 centimetres, 178 centimetres, sorry, which is 5 foot 10. And Reynolds is uh, 173 centimetres, which is 5.8. Yeah, that's all numbers and figures. Is he better where it counts? <laughs> <laughs> when did the Bulldogs enter the New South Wales Rugby League or NRL? 1940s. This is multiple choice oh. before you get buzz in. First multiple choice, I should have mentioned that. Is it A... 1930, B, 1935, or C, 1940? Bertman, 35. Bertman is correct. It's B, 1935. How many times does the letter A appear in Cronulla Sutherland Sharks? Chez, three. Three is correct. Nice. Uh, Laurie Daly played for how many NRL teams? Burtman. Sounds like a trick question, but one. Yeah, that's, that's one what is correct. Said, yeah. It was a trick question. He's on to me. Beautiful. Yeah, the Vikings. He played uh, 244 games for the Raiders from 1987 to 2000. Give me the name of three players for the Broncos' current squad whose first or last name starts with the letter T. Burtman. Tess Nui. Yes. Fuck. Um, There's five of them. Five. It's a test. No, I need three. There's five of them. With what? Sorry, with T. 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 Stop stalling. Oh, you fucking got that, Jez. You have a crack. I'm just <laughs> you got test. No, he's one. Tav Peng Junior. <laughs> he plays for the Bulldogs now. <laughs> <laughs> um, T. T. We mentioned them. We all mentioned oh, them in our sides. Yeah, see, lucky he didn't have his fucking notes. <laughs> I would have got that too straight away. It was on the Broncos page. There's oh. one. There's one who's still suspended. 
You didn't have him in your side. Flag. Oh, Thomas Flag- Flagler. Thomas Flagler. You can buzz in. Anyone's up for grabs? Need one more. Need one I more. this. Yeah. Need one more. Completely see me mine. Oh, Ches Tyson Gamble. Tyson Gamble. Oh, Ches gets the points. Jesus. Righty, hey, fantastic. Away. We've got five versus two. Ches has taken an early lead. Lottie Takiri play for the Broncos, the Tigers, and which Birdman. other NRL team? Lottie Takiri won the comp with the Rabbitohs. It's our Sydney Rabbitohs in uh, 2014. Mm. Righty, Birdo gets that one. Five plays three. In what year did the Sharks win the grand final? Birdman. 13. <laughs> No, just before. Is it? Oh, no. third name was Chooks. Since eleven, I'm gonna have a guess. Two thousand eleven. No, fifteen. No, sixteen. Sixteen. I hear about it every fucking day. Two thousand sixteen. Birdo gets those points. Uh, what was the score? Oh, it was it was, it was a lowish score in, in today's. Regards, I suppose you could say. Really, but it was half a blowout for what it was. No, it wasn't a blowout. No, like because everyone was predicting. Oh, they, yeah, win. they beat Storm. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't wasn't a blowout by any means. Give you a clue. They won by two points. Birdman, eighteen sixteen. Ooh, close. I'll say sixteen fourteen. Closer. Fourteen twelve. Fourteen twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Birdo gets the points. <laughs> All right, next multiple choice. Which of the Walters brothers play for both Brisbane and Canberra? Is it A, Kerrod, B, Kevin, or C, Steve? Well, I can almost rule out. Ches, Kerrod. He's ruled that one out for you. <laughs> I was going to say. Um, Birdman, Kev. Kevy boy. He's taking the lead six times. He plays five here. Kevin, Kieran, Kerrod. <laughs> Kerrod played for the Broncos only. He played for a few other teams, but just the Broncos. Kevin played 50 games for the Raiders and 237 for the Broncos. And Steve played just for the Raiders. Uh, who was the captain for the Bulldogs in their 2004 grand final victory? Burt Mann. Matt Ryan. <laughs> Matt Ryan. Don't know of any Matt Ryan. Mm-hmm. Got half the answer right. You're going to Andrew, are you? Oh, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> the Bobcat. Chez gets the points. Six apiece. And had the old lethal Hazem on the wing. That was the one where Steve Price got injured. Steve Price was the captain. Uh, JT came in and uh, ended up giving me his premiership ring. Remember that? Yeah, well, I was thinking uh, Matty Utai was. <laughs> oh, Utah. Oh. Rogers. Uh, in, in 2019, in a 2019 finals game against the Storm, which Raiders player was struck in the eye by a firework? Remember that? It was when they were running I, onto the field. I do. I was at the at the white ball, actually, when I did that. I was at the white ball. Can you, can you reread the question, please? With the guru. In a 2019 grand final against the Storm, sorry, in a 2019 finals game against the Storm, which Raiders player was struck in the eye by a firework? Did he end up coming back on? He did in the end. Had to use an interchange though, but he came on on a HIA, so they got a free interchange. I'll give you a clue. He's no longer at the Raiders. Mm. He's no longer in the NRL. Did play last year. Recently boxed. Did he play for a little bit last year? Yeah. George Williams. Nope. He recently had a boxing match. Oh, boxing. Like a charity boxing match. Before the last like, on the last NRL card. Yeah, well, I don't watch that shit. He's got a brother who plays for the Tigers. Luscious is his brother. That mean Lay Lua. Joey Lay Lua. Was it really? Hand fed. Wow. Hand fed. He lost that boxing too, didn't he? Did he yeah, win? I, no, he no I think he won. Yeah, Darcy. He won. Yeah, we won't speak of that yeah. nonsense. Uh, seven plays six, nice and tight, just like I like them. Uh, who wore number one for the Broncos in their 2015 grand final defeat against the Cowboys? Chez. Ben Hunt? Number one. Oh, number one. Oh. Here you go, because it's going to take no, a No, no, no. Um, this. No, um, no. I'll be to guess. Um. I can I can picture his face. This is an ordinary twenty-one and done. I tell you, we'll be here till Monday. 
Give us a hint. Um, he followed his coach around a lot. Oh, Bertman. Um, Darius Boyd. Darius Boyd is yeah. correct. Oh, so you don't hunt. I actually had who wore the number seven, and I had Hunt in there, but then I changed him up to the height question, so I had to take him out. Uh, so you had the question right at 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, a famous crowd sign which reads, who needs a big willy when you have a great tongue, is reference to which two Birdman. players? Um, Willie Mason and Alan Tongue. Yes, fantastic. And it was our um, our Facebook background there for a while. Fantastic. Uh Sign, I love it. Mm. Last of the multiple choice, in which year did SBW walk out in the Bulldogs? A, 2007, B, 2008, or C, 2009? This was massive in headlines, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Nine. I'm thinking nine. But, man, I'm going to say, Ches. Who's who's buzzing? Okay, I reckon it's Ches, nine. (laughs) Should let him go first. Eight. Eight's correct. Wow, ten plays six. Birdo, he's on four straight. Eight centenary of league. Listen carefully, buzzing quick. What is Ricky Stewart's nickname? Birdman, Sticky. Yeah. Is that a general one or? Is that? <laughs> Who has yeah. played more games for the Sharks, David Peachy or Wade Graham? Birdman, David Peachy. Peachy has played two hundred and thirty-two. Graham two hundred and seventeen. Uh, 12 plays 6, double the score. Which of the four clubs we previewed today has won the most premierships? Chez Brisbane. Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Yeah. They've won eight. Very close. They've won eight. Eight and six. Yep. 1938, 42, 1980, 84, 85, 88. So they've won four in the 80s. 95 and 2004. So it's been a long time but, uh, between drinks uh, now, Broncos have won six, Raiders won three, and Sharks have won just the one. So another point there for Birdo. We've got six plays, 13. This point, this uh, last question, and it's worth how many points, Shez? Eight. Six and 13. Is that 19? No, the difference. Oh, the difference? Yeah. So it's worth eight. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, no, I was thinking, isn't that, only, isn't that only 19 questions? Yeah, because you missed out on a point on the second. Oh, did we? Yeah, Shikovsky. You know, you could spell oh, it. that's right. I'm going to have half it? each. Oh, <laughs> that's what I've got to put up with every week. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, nearest two. Write your answers down. How many games has Wayne Bennett coached for oh. the Broncos? Do you want a bracket? Yep. It's between 600 and 650. Eight points this is worth. <laughs> All right, read your answer out. Six hundred and twenty-one. Read your answer out. Chairs. Six hundred and thirty-one. Oi! <laughs> answer is six hundred and twenty-nine. Oh, you country! Points go to chairs. Eight <laughs> points. That's fourteen. Takes the cake. Two weeks in a row. What a start to the season! It's just these last questions. Anyone you like to thank, mate? Oh, I like to thank Cooper's Brewery. <laughs> Uh, Winfield Blue, <laughs> White Ball, Top the White Hotel, <laughs> Top Sport. No, uh, fantastic. So that was a great edition, 21 and done. We'll do the same next week. So make sure you do a bit of research on the teams we'll be doing uh, next week, boys. So Talk looking forward struggling. to that. Uh, yep. Let's jump right now into Beer of the Weeks, lads. What have uh, the boys down at the uh, White Ball, Mr. Hawkeye, set you up with this week? I can see a nice little orange label there. Mate, we had a little discussion yesterday. Uh, afternoon about this and we went through the fridges down there we're on slim pickings at the moment Birdo we've mm-hmm. almost gone through the whole bottle of would you believe that <laughs> apart from things that obviously are now no longer get, no longer there uh, just in, in the beer range uh, we come across these guys which I used to drink religiously uh, years ago uh, our Cooper's Mild Ale mid-strength uh, drink from Cooper's if you like the, the, the green label the sparkling ale no it's pale ale the green sorry, one pale, sorry, pale, sparkling thank you that's alright the sorry, man Dad. that doesn't drink the beer had, I've had too many beers that's <laughs> uh, the, the, the pale ale it's got a, a similar flavour but it's a lot more crisp and it's not quite as full on and, and, and heavy as the, as the green label absolutely being a mid-strength you can have a few um, Tri- triple parked <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah no actually uh Gibbo, one of the reps, he was in at work there. I was sending float in, must have been yesterday, uh, with a few other the, the head honchos. So, looks like they're doing some deals around town. Hop down to the Watt Bull and grab yourself a sixer. Mate, they do make these in cans too. If you ever see them in the cans, 
On tap is the best to have them. The Keens are better than the Stubbies. It's a little bit hard to find. Very, very crisp. Uh, pretty pretty well priced too for sort of a not not top range beer, but one of the boutique sort of brands. Yeah, they're not going to cost you an arm and a leg. But I rate these very high. Uh, and five out of five. Oh, the big five. These are good. Look out. And they have no preservatives in them too, so you can have a shitload and you wake up pretty good the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no That's additives something. as well. Um, yep. This one I do know for a fact. Uh, a lot of people probably don't don't believe me, but all your big brands, uh, almost all of them are overseas owned. One thing about Coopers is as long as they draw breath, uh, this, this brewery will always be Australian owned. So a bit like this show, mate. Absolutely, 100%. Um, a lot of the boys drink this at headquarters. I've tried it before. Um, I had a couple of big sessions on it only because there was a kayak that was winnable in the bottle shop. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it a three. Three? Yeah. Not bad. Three and a half? Push up the three and a half? I'll give it three and a half. Three and a half it is. I'll give it three and a half because they're twist tops. Ah, extra point. Extra half a point. Love it. Uh, fantastic, boys. Thanks again to the White Bull Hotel. Uh, great sponsors of the show each and every week. And if you do like them and you want something stronger, get on those Coopers Sparkling, which I mentioned before. Oh, the red, red, the labels. red labels. Remember Dad but said- But then the next day, yeah, I'm not good. You know, when Darts was on, Donaldo plays in dad's side he has to put him first in the singles because if he's any lower than first in the singles he's no good he gets on the sparkling he, he drinks the sparkling he's rotten <laughs> <laughs> by the time there's four or five games of singles he can't even score uh anything else boys before we wrap it up as i mentioned the footy's back this weekend yes. which is fantastic uh big deep dive into the four teams that we looked at today uh just Mate, about I, wraps uh, us up missed out on my charity bet last week i was a bit disappointed there with uh the world dart seniors championship I had Phil Taylor to win that, and lucky I didn't put the bet on I was going to. I was going to put a lot of money on him to win outright uh, back when it first opened up. He was at $2.50. I didn't really check exactly who was playing. I knew there was. I knew of some people um, had known this and looked at the draw. I wouldn't have put money on anyway. He actually drew uh, Kevin Painter in the second round. Now, people that don't know Kevin Painter, he's been around for a long time, but he's currently still on the tour. So he's fresh, and he come off a comp, well, like one of those floor tournaments to go and play into that. Playing someone that hasn't played for two, three years, I would have backed Painter, nearly. I, would, it, it, I was surprised to see him in there. Uh, Robert Thornton ended up picking up the trophy for, for the weekend, which was good to see. Now, there was a bit of uh, a lot of uh, bad press on the on the socials about it. There was, um, like, the camera work was shoddy. The sound quality was bad. Wasn't on KO Sports, wasn't on Fox, it was on... Some weird English channel, IT4 or something. Sure, it just wasn't a review of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I lucked out there a little bit. So if I hadn't known that, I probably would have went something different. But this week's uh, charity bet should get up. Hopefully so, we can get a bit of money there. We've got about two grand in the charity bit account, so we do, yeah. fantastic nice. money going to some great charities. All right, boys, let's wrap her up. Way let's over time. Uh, check out the footy. Give us a like. Give us a um, comment, whatever. Make sure you end up over at our website, become an SGM club member, and sign up for our footy tip and comp $1,000 worth of cash and prizes up for grabs. Completely free to join. Till next week, we'll see you then.